hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God, mm -hmm. so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he, being dead, still speak. By faith, he not was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. By faith, Noah, being dividedly warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. These are on our prayer list. Johnny Murphy, Jennifer Watson, Chara Marshall, Shirley Houston, Cornelia Welch, Hattie Qualls, the James family, the Leonard Dunbar family, the Swayzer family, Dr. Ava Lewis and family, Gloria Beatty, Ruth Harrison, Gloria West, John Adams, Debbie Crosby, Marcia Shackelford, and Joel Klim Cusick. So please keep them in your prayers this week. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We marvel at your creation. Yes. We, we thank you for our many, many, many blessings. You have blessed us so richly. We, we ask that you guide us through this next week. Yes. Yes. Order our steps so that yes. we do and behave as you would have us to. Yes. We, we ask you to forgive us our sins, yes. Lord. Yes. Yes, both in yes. commission and omission yes, and yes, we Lord. thank you for your son Jesus the thank perfect you, sacrifice that thank you, that that helped with the remission of our sin yes, we, Lord. we ask you to comfort the bereaved today Lord that's we ask yes, you to Lord. heal thank the sick yes. we ask you to just hold all that need a blessing in the hollow yes. of your hand today yes, Lord yes. we we are a, we are in desperate need of you and your guidance there yes, there are sick among us, Lord. We, yes, we ask you yes, to, to just to heal them. Send yes, your Holy amazing. Spirit to comfort the families and, yes. and, and help us to accept your will in our lives. Yes. 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 We, we need you. We need you every yes. single day. Yes. Yes. We, we thank you for every step, uh, every breath that you let us yes. take. Yes. And, yes. and on, that, on that glorious day when, when faith becomes sight, yes. receive us into your presence, Lord. Oh, yes. That'll be our reward to be eternally present with you and we can look on your face. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. To all of Second Baptist, to visitors in person and online. Yeah. And to our family and friends who are also joining us today, I say good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is so great to see you. It is great to see those of you who are joining us online. I took a peek a few moments ago. And it is just always good for us to gather together Amen. as the Lord's people. I have a few announcements before we get into another song by the music ministry. Yeah. And I had to double check, they were saying the second song. And uh, then we'll get right into our conversation as we continue our discussion through the book of Acts. On next Sunday after service, we will give out book bags. I want to thank 
uh, Deaconess Askew for leading this Amen. effort. Amen. And she gave up her time, uh, her talent, and her treasure as a part of it. Amen. And I want to thank her for leading us in this. And there, were others who, there were others who joined her in this effort. And we'll have book bags available for all our children. We know Amen. on the 24th, I believe it is, Bay City Schools are planning to return back to class. And certainly we'll pray for them and yeah. with them. But we also want to back up our prayers with some action. Yeah. Right? And so we have book bags available. If you want to contribute to uh, us having more book bags for children, uh, both members of Second Baptist and the community, you may do so in the church office. Uh, we can make sure that every child that needs a book bag for this school year to thrive this school year, that they can have it. Amen. And so on next Sunday, immediately following service, we will give out uh, those backpacks. So those uh, children of Second Baptist, grandchildren uh, that are in need of backpacks, please have them join us on next Sunday and immediately after service. Again, we will distribute those book bags. Also, uh, as a part of that, please update your contact information uh, as more details about that giveaway will go out this week via the phone tree. Uh, so to make sure you don't miss that information, please uh, help us make sure we have the right message. I promise you I'll be short when we deliver the message. <laughs> we want to make sure everybody, I heard somebody laugh behind me when I said short. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Amen. But I do want to make sure we all get the message so that all of our children and you have what they can, what they need so they can have a great school year, all right? Amen. Again, I want to invite you all to join uh, us uh, in two Saturdays at 12 noon at Mount Olive. Uh, it is, I'm going to be ordained along with six of my brothers and sisters who have been Amen. serving in ministry with me for uh, myself eight years, a few of them eight years, and some of them much longer. Uh, we're going to be ordained by our pastor on Saturday, August 25th. Is that right? The last Saturday in August. I'm not going to be 28th. Last Saturday in August at 12 noon. And we invite you to join us uh, online. It'll be streaming on my August Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you're interested in coming in person, you can RSVP on my August website on next week. So I'll remind you on next Sunday uh, so you can have that information if you're interested in coming in person. Uh, we're doing, there's RSVP process at Mount Olive for limited capacity, for safe social distancing and other safety protocols that they have in place. And then again, in September, uh, we will celebrate God putting us together as pastor and people. Amen. And that will be the installation service also at Mount Olive. Amen. I would ask that if you and your family are interested in attending, that you begin to notify us in the church office. That way we can block out seats at Mount Olive for everyone at Second Baptist that wants to attend. Amen. Okay? But we do need names uh, so that we can have them on the list to honor Mount Olive's process for attending service. Mm -hmm. So please, if you know now that you are going to attend, please let us know now. And as soon as you make a decision of whether or not you're going to attend, please let us know so we can make sure that every member of Second Baptist that would like to attend the installation We'll be yeah. able to do so. All right. Amen. Uh, we are having it at Mount Olive, uh, but Mount Olive has agreed to make sure that we are the priority in terms of attendance. Uh, but I need your help in making sure that that takes place decently and in order. All right. Amen. So please give me that information. Give Miss Eunice that information as soon as possible, so we can have a list and communicate that list to Mount Olive, so we can do this the right way. Yeah. Also, if you are choosing to not, I'm not going to take it personal. If you choose not to come in person. I understand the circumstances. You may join us online. It will be showing on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel will be streaming as well. So again, that's the last Saturday in September. That is September 25th, also at noon. VBS is this week. Let's celebrate for Vacation Bible School. Yay! Our teachers and our media ministry have been working diligently. Uh, they have recorded videos, videos are being edited and made nice and pretty. And so we want you to join us this week on our YouTube channel and you will be able to participate in VBS 
at your own convenience. Amen. All right, this is one of those few times where we're like Burger King. You can have it your way. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody? Okay. Amen. So, I got it. Amen. whatever time of the day you want to watch your lesson, you will be able to. And that also facilitates us being able to have our children and you also participate when so we know that uh, they'll be outside playing in the evening they might be swimming you all might be camping whatever it is you may be doing and we took into consideration uh, that children may not be the easiest to pull them from outside in the evening uh, particularly after last school year they spent so much time on zoom to get them to sit down on the computer or in front of the tv uh, at that time of the day however we do want them to do it. We want to make sure we remember that church and learning and growing and discipleship is a priority. So at our convenience, we are going to watch these videos that our teachers have worked so diligently to prepare. And our media ministry has helped them uh, to, to put it together for us. And so I want and encourage everyone to join us on VBS Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. If you can't do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, do it at your uh, discretion, with however it fits your schedule. Yeah. And since we have VBS this week, we will not have Bible study. We'll do our conclusion for the Mission of God's People series the following week. I want us to support VBS. Let everybody say VBS. VBS. On Saturday at 11 a.m., it is our monthly men's meeting. We are learning and growing together as men from our layman's book. I want to thank Deacon Askew for his yeah. Yeah. leadership in this endeavor. Thank you to all the men who have participated and we'd love to see more men come out and learn and grow with us through those meetings. Leave this all for announcement. All right, General. <laughs> we have three birthdays this week that I was given. Deacon Daryl Watson, happy birthday to you, Deacon. Brother Michael Watson, happy birthday, Brother Watson, and Sister Crystal Bias, happy birthday. I see you back there. Happy birthday, Flower Girl. All right, if there's any couple celebrating wedding anniversaries, happy wedding anniversary to you and yours. As our music ministry comes, please open your Bibles to Acts chapter 13. We will be listening to the first 12 verses today.
steps I have I'm not going to give us no 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 select songs. Today's text gives us some reminders as the church regarding our service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, we're looking at Acts chapter 13 verses 1 through 12. I have the English Standard Version today. I want to read these 12 verses for our hearing. And then we'll have our conversation. Again, Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, The Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But, but Elymas, the magician, for that was the meaning of his name, opposed them seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, 
you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Amen. As a title of our conversation, I would like to call it Confirmed Commission. Amen. Confirmed Commission. Gotta love technology. That's why you shouldn't use that's why I shouldn't use it while I'm preaching, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's right, that's right. The Great Migration refers to the journey of millions of African Americans who left the southern United States between nineteen sixteen and nineteen seventy for destinations across the country in places such as Bay City. While it is often framed as a proactive move in search of better economic opportunities, it was equally a flight from the brutal segregation and social oppression that characterized the post-Reconstruction South. The increased introduction of this already diasporic population to cities across the U.S. left an imprint on every aspect of our national culture. All right. Now, the Mississippi Museum of Art and the Baltimore Museum of Art are seeking to reflect on the black culture that flourished amid the Great Migration. Mm -hmm. They have gathered a cadre of artists, writers, musicians, and makers for a jointly organized exhibition that will unveil newly commissioned works by 12 of the most acclaimed African American artists working in the United States today. Mm -hmm. The exhibition called Movement in Every Direction Legacies of the Great Migration will open in 2022. It will explore personal and communal histories, all right, all right. familial ties, the black experience, and the consequences of land ownership and environmental shifts, among so much more, to consider how we can expand our understanding of this essential moment in American history. Yeah, right. In Acts chapter 13, we are at a similar pivotal moment in history yeah. as we've been going through acts we've noticed that there has been movement among ethnicities mm -hmm. there has also been geographic movement and there are times when there seems to be easy simple success yeah. but there are also times where there is friction between the people in these locations when we get to Acts th chapter 13, we're beginning to turn our corner for the rest of the book of Acts. We've seen some of the places that we have gone through. We started in Jerusalem for seven or eight chapters. Then we swung through Samaria. Then we went to Caesarea, back to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then we went back to Jerusalem on last week. And here we are again, back in Antioch. Yes. When we left Antioch, they had sent some money and some food to the church in Jerusalem after hearing from the Lord that a famine was on its way. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this faithful response of the church and how you and I as a church have the same faithful responses when we hear from the Lord. We respond when the Lord speaks. We don't wait to be by sight people. We respond in faith. As Deacon S. Dre's read, when we hear from the Lord, we don't wait to see it with our eyes. We discern it from the Lord and then we respond. Amen. But we hear in those first few verses that they didn't just respond in service, but they were a fasting and praying church. And that is critical for the entire passage because they heard from the Lord by sincerely seeking the Lord. That is where we are. We know we are in a time of history that we have been put into some situations 
with the pandemic, situations with the political climate that we're living in, mm -hmm. situation in which the needs of people have come back to the surface that had always been there, that we have some soul searching to do as the church. All right. All right. If you're like me, you miss being able to be in church like we used to be. But we can also acknowledge that those days may be over for good. All right. Now, don't get me wrong. In some shape, form, or fashion, we will enter the building soon for in-person worship. But we know it's going to be different, and the definition of normal is going to be different. Yes, yes. Our spiritual ancestors in the book of Acts, the early church who are living out a new chapter in history, were faced with a similar situation and similar crisis. And I just read history about the Great Migration, but many of you under the sound of my voice experienced it. Many of you have shared with me that you came from Mississippi, you came from Alabama, you came from Louisiana. And yes, it was for better jobs, but the reality of the situation is it was for safety reasons at times, too. It was for our families to have more opportunities to live in safe places but we also discovered once we got to Bay City, once we got to Saginaw, once we got to Detroit, that it was still some of the same problems in different forms in those places. Yes, yes. Such is the same truth in our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. We know the promises of Scripture. We know the Great Commission. We know what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and 8. And he promises that as he sends us, he's going to be with us. And that we'll be successful in being his witnesses. But sometimes that success is accompanied with suffering. We talked about that in depth on last week. But as you heard in this passage, yes, Barnabas, Paul were sent. Yes, they succeeded. But they came up against the familiar, the familiar foe of people abusing and perverting the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's really all that happens in this text. But let's unpack it and see how the Lord is speaking to us today, tomorrow, and yes, always. Right. When we get to the first three verses, you heard that they were sent, but it just wasn't them discerning by themselves that they had been sent. Mm -hmm. All of us have a calling. We've been confronted with that over and over again in Acts. But none of us is our calling just for us. Amen. Notice it says they were in church having a prayer service as they were fasting when they collectively discerned that it was time for them to be sent. This helps us with why we have ordination services for preachers. All right, all right. This helps us understand why we have ordination services for deacon and deaconess because we discern the leaders of the church together. Yes. yes, God speaks to individual people about their calling. Right. That they may be called out and set apart, as the text says, they were for a specific task. But it was confirmed in the body of the church. Yes. It was confirmed in the life of the church. That's why at the end of verse 3 it says they laid their hands on them before they left. Now, laying on the hands may have to change with COVID and some of the other precautions we have to take. But that is why we're having an ordination service in a few weeks, because it took some time for the church to discern whether or not I was really called to preach or not. All right, all right. I could go and tell my pastor I was called to preach and be sincere. But God always confirms his leaders yes, in the church. It took time for me to preach at Mount Olive and preach at other places in the state, preach in Tennessee, and even preach before you some for there to be a collective discernment of whether or not the Lord was really speaking through me. And that goes for every preacher. The same thing with our deacon and deaconess. First of all, they're selected because they have already been serving the Lord. It was really in their heart, like we just sang. And then even after they were ordained, there is continued discernment about whether or not the deacon and deaconess that are put in place to serve us have really been called for that. Right, right. Not only deacon and deaconess, but every leadership position in the church, every ministry that we have that has a leader, we know whether or not they really are leaders. 
And again, yes, the Lord speaks to us individually, but then the Lord confirms it in the church. We know there have been times when people have said they were called to be leaders, and we remember like we remember Saul. We know who Saul was. That's why Barnabas had to take Saul to church with him and say that it had been confirmed to him too. And then there was some time where we didn't really hear or see Saul. Saul was somewhere with just he and the Lord to be taught what he needed to be taught in order to lead. Then at the appointed time, here in Acts chapter 13, God speaks to the entire church to confirm his leadership, to confirm Barnabas' leadership. And then John was a leader, John Mark, but it also says that he was submitted to a time of training. And we know sometimes that's missing in the church. A lot of us get excited. I'm not talking about Second Baptist. I'm not talking about somebody else. But we know people who say they are a leader but don't want to submit to leadership. And we know in Scripture, in order for us to be leaders, we are to be servant leaders. Jesus said, I came to serve, not be served. And we should have the same disposition. Only can we only then can we be leaders when we have a always a posture of servants because leaders are just called to serve people the most to out suffer people the most because that's what Jesus did. That's what the 12 did. And that's what all of these leaders that we're going to hear about in Acts and further. That's what they did. They submitted to the church for accountability just like we do too. Mm -hmm. I'm held accountable to you. That's why I invite you to, as you hear me teach and preach, if you hear something that doesn't line up with scripture, holler at me. And some of you have had that conversation with pastor. You said this in Bible study, but I read this there. We looked at it together and if it needed to be corrected, we corrected it. Same thing with sermons. Same thing in meetings that we've had. Because I seek to truly be a shepherd, not just someone who is trying to lord anything over you all. We are in this thing together. And we see that in true servant leaders, not just in the church, but throughout the community. We can discern whether or not somebody really is for the people or not. We can discern if politicians are really trying to help people or they just there for the paycheck. We can even see that when it comes to law enforcement and so on and so forth. We can tell whether or not people really should be in those positions. And we can tell that because that is how God designed it. That is not just individual discernment, but it is collective communal discernment that Jesus sends us in service. So not only does Jesus send in service, but again, he helps us discern collectively. That's even when the process that you all had that resulted in me being the pastor elect, there was a process put in place for discernment. All of us that are in leadership position, there was a process of discernment. And not only does that process stop, but we continue to discern who is to be the leaders in our congregation. Who are to be the leaders in the kingdom. And we continue to submit ourselves to training. We continue to be educated in the word. All of us, as long as we have breath in our bodies, the more we need to learn about the Bible. Which then, by definition, means more to what God wants to reveal to us about ourselves. And if we're blessed to be serving leaders, more we need to learn about continuing to serve people in those leadership positions. Jesus sends through the church. He sends Paul, Barnabas, and they discern to take John Mark with them so he can be with them for on-the-job training as well. And Jesus sends us to be successful. But again, success is not always going to come easy. On yesterday, the head coach for the longest period of time that even helped me fall in love with football, Bobby Bowden, was funeralized. And I listened to it as I was finishing up the sermon and doing some other things. And there was a constant refrain from people who got up, whether it was his own children, whether it was his wife, whether it was all of the coaches he worked with and the coach under him, all of his players, thousands and thousands of players as he coached at Florida State for over 34 years. 
And it was that he didn't just care about them as football players or as coaches. He cared about them as people. He cared about them as future husbands. He always made sure that his coaches didn't spend too much time coaching football and away from their family. He told them every day at the end of practice, go home and hug your wife. Go home and kiss your wife. Go home and hug your children. He even kept in touch with players after they graduated, who he made sure they graduated to make sure they were being good, godly men. He even encouraged them and invited them to church every Sunday. He shut practice down and on Sunday so they could go to church. And that was all from his faith. But if you know anything about college football, even if you don't like football, you can read lips, you'll notice that college football uh, coaches speak in tongues every Saturday afternoon. And it is not glossolalia, but they speak in tongues every Saturday afternoon. But another common thread of Bobby Bowden is that he never was heard saying a cuss word. And that was intentional because he wanted to be an example, not just telling them what to do, but showing them what to do. And him dying at the age of 91, he not only influenced players to be professional football players and coaches to be coaches and Hall of Famers, but there were players who are pastors all across this country. All right. There are those who are coaching at every level who are emulating him, making sure they don't just care about players, but they know their names. They remember where they're from. They remember that before they are anything else, that they are sons of God, mm -hmm. and that then they can live out that and ground it in their faith. And over and over again, that is what he was known for. But again, if you know anything about college football, his success did not come without being lied on. Because a part of recruiting means you have to go in someone's living room and get them to come to your school. Which means other coaches were saying stuff about him negatively, but it really never stuck. Because there was nothing for it to stick to because he was a man of integrity. Not only that, but there were people who criticized that he wasn't more boisterous, that he didn't use foul language to motivate his players. They criticized him for emphasizing going to church. They criticized him for emphasizing his faith in church. And yet they had to turn away people at his funeral at the Civic Center on Florida State's campus. Yeah. Then there were thousands of people who watched his service on YouTube where some of these other coaches, there's empty seats at their funerals. Yeah. They aren't giving tributes on ESPN and some of the other sports channels. But a man who dedicated his life and even coaching football from the place of his faith is being memorized and making grown men cry like babies because of the impact he made on their lives. When we get to this passage, we see a comparison of a similar sort. We hear that they make this trip and they sailed from the mainland to the island of Cyprus. This is Barnabas' hometown. So they may have gone there so Barnabas could catch up with some family. And that was also a place that some people had already been evangelized. And they get to this island and they make a trip across the island to Paphos, the capital of the island. And as they're going along, they're stopping on a tour, teaching and preaching people, leading people to Jesus. And it sounds as though it was successful without any hiccups until they got to the capital city. Yeah. They get to the capital city and the proconsul, who is the governor of this island, he hears they're in town and he is wanting to become, he wants to know about the Lord. He wants to know about the word of God. And we know this because the text says he summons them to tell him about the word of the Lord. We also know this because of the other person we meet who is in the court. Yeah. We meet Bar Jesus. Yeah. Now, it's interesting that we hear these details about a magician who has Jesus as a part of his name who has no interest in Jesus. Wow. Now, for him to be named Bar Jesus, that means that he was Jewish, which means he knew the word of God as we have it in the Old Testament, our Hebrew Bible. And it means that he was knowingly participating in what was forbade by scripture. All right. 
Now that's important because again we get this comparison. We get the pro counsel who is sincerely seeking to understand the word of the Lord, who is sincerely seeking a relationship with God, and he doesn't really know how to get there. And so he has this magician as it's labeled. Some say sorcerers in your translation. And this was someone who used incantations and amulets and formulas and potions in an effort to communicate scripture, which we know that was an abuse of scripture. That is a perversion of scripture, just like people who lied on the Lord when it came to the enslavement of Africans. Just like men who have lied on scripture to oppress women and suppress women's voice and not allow women to be in leadership. This is just like people in this country who abuse scripture in terms of the way we look at people who live in the Middle East. And who even abuse scripture for political gain. All of that is at play in this moment and we notice it because it says when Paul was teaching and explaining the word of God Bar Jesus jumps in and tries to persuade him not to believe what Paul is saying. And we know we experience this as well. We see the word of God being taught and somebody says, but what about this? Now, if you're saying, but what about this sincerely? You're saying it because you're getting clarification. That's one thing. But if you're knowingly twisting up scripture, knowingly throwing a wrench in the situation, knowingly trying to sabotage the teaching and preaching of the word of God that is showing itself to be beneficial to people's lives, that's when we know it's some bar Jesus stuff going on. Not Jesus to Christ, not Jesus our Lord and Savior, but some bar Jesus stuff going on. And again, we see his evil intentions and he knew since he was a part of the court, if the word of the Lord goes forth, I'm going to lose my influence. If the word of the Lord goes forth, I'm going to lose some money. If the word of the Lord goes forth, I might be out of a job. If the word of the Lord goes forth, I'm not going to be in this prominent place. But if we got into that place by trickery, by cutting corners, we shouldn't be in that place anyway. Because we know if we obey the Lord, we know the promises of Scripture. Just like Bar Jesus knew that if the Lord puts you in a place, if you get there from your faithfulness, You pray about the Lord blessing with you, blessing you with the job and you get in there. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen. All right. Because even if you get fired or laid off, the Lord is going to have something else yeah. for you. Yeah. The Lord has already gone before you to make provision. But Bar Jesus knew that he got where he was by the wrong means. And notice this comparison that we hear that the evil spirits was in Bar Jesus. But then it says... Paul was full of the spirit and he was able to tell him what Jesus told him on the road to Damascus. You remember Acts chapter 9 when Paul had evil spirits in him too. And he was on his way to do some evil in Damascus that he had already been doing. And Jesus blinds him to sit him down to give him an opportunity to understand the truth. That's what happens right here. Bar Jesus is blinded. Jesus does through Paul what he did to Paul before. And let me say this parenthetically. Just like you and I know where we've been. Where the Lord has brought us from. Some of the consequences we've experienced for our sins. We can say thank you Lord. That those consequences can be redemptive. That you can let us experience the consequences of our sin. Experience the consequences of our ignorance. Experience the consequences of ignoring scripture. And with his grace and his mercy, we come to a clear understanding that the Lord's way is the only way. And we begin to follow that way. That's what happens in this text. He makes him blind because, again, he knew scripture. That's why Paul says, why are you trying to make crooked? What is straight? All right now. He knew he knew passages like Hosea 14 and 9 that says, Whoever is wise, let them understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let them know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and the upright walk in them. He also knew Proverbs 10 and 9 that says, Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, 
but those who make their ways crooked will be found out. Bar Jesus knew he was getting ready to be found out. And because he knew he was getting ready to be found out, he, uh, 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 wait a minute, don't listen to them. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit through Paul gets the devil and or his demons in Bar Jesus. But he doesn't punish Bar Jesus as much as Bar Jesus could have been punished. This response is merciful. Because since Bar Jesus knew scripture and ignored scripture, the Lord could have done what he did earlier in Acts chapter 5 with that couple that was stealing money from the Lord and took him out. But for some reason, the Lord shows the same thing to Bar Jesus that he showed to us that he is not just the Lord of another chance, but chance after chance after yeah. chance after yeah. chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he gives Bar Jesus the same chance that he's given you and I today. Right. If you're under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted scripture for what scripture is. Because yeah. remember, this is someone who has read the Bible. Yeah. They've been in Bible study. They've been in Sunday school. They've heard sound biblical teaching and preaching but they've chosen not to believe scripture as it is and chosen to do some other stuff and throw some other stuff in there and when we do that we expose ourselves to the consequences of making that decision by Jesus exposed himself to it and I have a sneaky suspicion if you and I are honest, we can, we've exposed ourselves to that in some shape, form, or fashion. And thanks be unto God that he gives us another chance. Amen. And he does through Paul what he did to Paul. And just as Paul had to be led into the city by hand, now this person who was pretending to be able to see other people's future has to be led around because he can't see. So other people lead him around and we don't get a conclusion as to what happens to Bar Jesus. And I think that that's left open because it's left open for you and I. When we have these experiences with the Lord, you and I still have a human responsibility to accept Jesus as the way. To accept scripture as the word of God. And where God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so that's where we're left today. Is being in that position. Of evaluating. If we have accepted that. Or if we're spiritually blind. Just like Bar Jesus. Well we see another comparison. Because the pro council sees what happens secondly and primarily heard the word taught and comes to faith in Jesus now that's important I said it that way on purpose because again we are to walk by faith and not by sight see he had already been taught scripture by Paul then this happened and so what he heard is paired with what he sees as a powerful combination to lead him to faith. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you have been taught scripture. You've heard it taught with sound, biblical teaching and preaching. And maybe you're waiting on the Lord to show you something, and the Lord might do that. But what the Lord is going to show you is simply going to confirm his holy word, and I pray that when the Lord shows you that, You accept it just like Sergius Paulus did. And you acknowledge Jesus as Lord. And this wasn't easy for Sergius Paulus either because he was known as Lord of this island. But to hear and accept Jesus as Lord means again he had to submit himself to Jesus. And he didn't need to be humiliated like Bar Jesus. To be humble and sometimes you and I have to be humiliated but I pray that it doesn't take God humiliating us for us to be humble and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior well Jesus he sent them on this journey and this is just one stop of the journey 
But as he sends them on this journey, he reminds them in this moment and reminds us then, now, and always that he sends us to be successful witnesses. But success sometimes comes with confrontation. Sometimes it comes with tension. And we can receive some instruction from how Paul responded. When we have confrontation, we respond as the Holy Spirit leads us to respond. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. If the Holy Spirit leads you to not say anything, that's a response too. Amen. If we don't know what to say, don't say anything. Because that's how we make messes. If we don't know what to say, that means we're not supposed to say anything. But in those moments where we know what to say, and it will be graciously... It will be lovingly. Yeah. Then we say what the Lord tells us to say. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. And leave it alone. Pray for the person. Pray for the people. Pray for the situation. Yeah. But we can see that instruction from Paul. Because he responded to Sergius the way he needed to. But he also responded to Bar Jesus the way he needed to. All right. There was this violinist. I uh, can't remember his first name. Last name was Chrysler. One of the most well-known violinists to this day. He passed away in 1962. But he was so good at playing the violin that he made a fortune as a violinist and doing concerts across the world. But he was also a generous person. And he gave most of his fortune away as he traveled seeing people in need. Since he gave most of his fortune away, he was unable to purchase this one-of-a-kind violin that he came across in his travels. Yeah. So what he did, he started budgeting. He was still being generous, but he started to save money a little bit at a time so he could go back and buy this priceless violin. Yeah. Saved up the money, went back to buy this violin. But when he went to the place to buy it, they told him that a collector had purchased it. For their collection. He got the information where the collector were, went to the collector's home, and he asked the collector if he could purchase this priceless violin from them. Yeah. The collector says that it was his most prized piece of his collection, and it was not for sale. Yeah. Well, Chrysler was very disappointed, and he began to walk away, but then he had an idea. So he turned around, went back to the house, and he asked the collector. May I just play that violin one time before it's confined to silence? Yeah. The, collect the collector agreed and he came in the house and Chrysler played the violin only as he could. And he played it so beautifully that he brought the collector to tears. Yeah. And the collector said, I cannot hold on to this instrument and deprive the world from hearing the beauty that just came through my house. Yeah. So you take the violin for free. And you play this for the rest of the world to hear. Because I cannot keep this to myself from the rest of the world. Yeah. And just like that collector. You and I as Christians cannot hold on to the gospel for ourselves. Just like that collector heard that music, as you and I have heard the gospel, yeah. as we have experienced the gospel in our lives, we have to share it with the world. Amen. And Jesus promises to be with us as we share it because he sends us to be successful witnesses. Again, we are in a pivotal point in this series in the book of Acts, just like the early church was at a pivotal point in its history. And you and I are in a pivotal point of human history too. We're in the midst of a pandemic that calls us to bring the Lord into our home. Yeah. Maybe for the first time. Mm -hmm. Cause some of us to bring the Lord back into our home. All right. And now we're in this position where we're in a new fresh place. Yeah. To share the gospel with the world. I believe God is strategically placing us with what we've seen that has been brought to us. All of these ministry opportunities that we've had these last 15 months, 
Not one time have I gone to people and said Second Baptist wants to do this or do that. The Lord has brought these vaccination clinics and these feeding opportunities. People have called Second Baptist and that is all the Lord putting Second Baptist on the mind and in the heart of people in this county, in this city, and in this state for us to do ministry. I can't stand here and say for sure what God is going to do with us. But I know that we are in a pivotal part of our history. And that that was evidence of Jesus' promises in his word. That he has positioned us to be sent out from this place. When we gather together, whether it's in person or virtually. To go out and be successful witnesses. And the first way that we become witnesses. Is by accepting him for who scripture says he is. Our Lord and Savior, the only way to get to God. So if you have under my, if you're under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we extend that invitation on his behalf. Let him come into your life and rule and reign in your life, and it will be the best decision you will ever make. Accept it, believe it in your heart, and confess it with your mouth, and you are saved. And we love to celebrate that with you publicly. So if you want to... Do that publicly with Second Baptist. You can come up at this time. Give us a call in the church office. Give us, send us a message on social media to the website. We'll be glad to have you as a part of the kingdom. Amen. We also want to extend to you the offer of church membership. It is God's desire, as we learned in scripture, that we're not only to be saved, but be a part of the church the Lord has sent us to. Be a part of that church and serve with the people in that church as a part of God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven, meeting the needs of his people holistically. We also offer you prayer. We'd be glad to add you to our prayer list to pray with you and to pray for you that God meets you and your family's needs holistically as he sees fit. So we offer you salvation. We offer you church membership. And we offer you prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this reminder that you send us to be successful witnesses. Keep this before us so that as we go, we can fulfill your great commission. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 I love you. Have a great week. Stay safe. Stay wise. And again, stay tuned so you can get all the information for our upcoming ministry opportunities. Amen.